my first book was titled The Soul of an Octopus, and a lot of people were like, what? <laughs> How could an invertebrate related to clams have a soul? Well, you cannot watch this series, Secrets of the Octopus, and not agree that if you have a soul, mm. an octopus has a soul. I had read it and I was so excited when I found out that you were going to write. I couldn't even believe you'd read the thing. <laughs> oh, um, that you, you know, that you were going to write this companion book, and I just felt you had done such a beautiful job in really complementing the series. That even though it bring, brings different elements, you have extra pieces where you're speaking to scientists that aren't involved in the series, but it just follows. It happened really organically, but it just really it, it follows all the things that we're discovering on camera and you're finding similar experiences with people that have octopuses as pets so it was just it's such a, a beautiful complimentary um book for the series it was such a joy for me because so many of the questions that i had when i was researching the first book we now had some of the answers mm. and it was just a blast to get a license to just spend some time calling up and talking to these amazing folks who mm. were finding out the answers to those questions I'd wondered about for years. And we are finding a lot of research, like recently with um, a team of scientists, we reviewed over 170 papers to show that uh, octopuses and their cousins, cuttlefish and squid, have the capacity to feel. They have the capacity to feel positive and negative emotions. Um, and that's intricately connected to consciousness. But to answer your question, yes, even despite having worked with them for 15 years, the things that we were seeing on these series, I was constantly surprised. Um, they never ceased to blow me away, especially with the level of um, intelligence that we're seeing and the incredible, just innovative solutions they're coming up with to um, counter the problems that they're faced with. When I started working in 2011, making friends with giant Pacific octopuses, um, one of the things, I, you fall in love with these animals, and whenever you love someone, what you want is to know, you know, what's it like to be you? And this is part of what you're doing mm -hmm. in the lab and in the wild. Mm -hmm. And your work is just so revolutionary and so eye-opening. Eye I feel like if an octopus doesn't want to be seen, it won't reveal itself to you. And there were some days um, on site where we would be in the water for three days straight uh, and we wouldn't find one of these. And there were six of us looking. Um, so it can take time to be able to spot an octopus, um, but be patient. And I think go down there in, you know, in the frame of mind that, it's just a privilege to watch them in their natural environment. Just watch and observe. Don't ever initiate contact because they might not want to be touched. Um, and that can be very, feel very threatening towards them. If they want to initiate contact, then just keep it respectful. Don't grope them. Don't, you know, just put out a hand as if you're offering a handshake and leave it as that. Shooting ink would be good. There's times yeah. when you really want, you need to shoot some ink. If you're being harassed. Well, and that. if you're an author, <laughs> yeah. shooting the ink. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think mine would be squeezing into any space. I mean, the only limit for them to be able to squeeze their body into any tiny space is the beak. So the size of the beak, um, they can squeeze their entire body into a hole the size of their beak. Think of airplane travel. It would be so much more comfortable. <laughs> yes, it would. I'm trying to dress up for an event, you know. <laughs> oh, that's right. Any color yes. you want. It's great. <laughs> yeah.